During the life of Jesus, the picture language in Rome still dedicated the empire to its pantheon of ancient gods. Within 300 years, that would change. New pictures would be painted in Rome. Instead of the pantheon of gods, the imperial power made way for the disciples of Jesus. And with the nativity story, an unmissable act of God had broken all the rules of what had gone before. God had come to earth, humbled himself in a tough human life and died a tortured death. The story had power, even in imperial Rome. The apostles responsible now sat at Jesus' side. The new picture language set Paul, the architect of Christianity as we know it, next to Luke, the man many believe was his key follower, to whom is ascribed the picture language of the shepherds in the nativity. These three other outsiders in the nativity scene are another piece of picture language. They are some of the favourite characters in the nativity story, perhaps because they bring presents. But their real role is to be the flip side of the shepherds. They're here to tell us that the nativity story, like the rest of the Christian message, was also being targeted at a non-Jewish audience across the empire and beyond. One of the wise men has always caught my eye. In every nativity set I've ever seen, one of the wise men is always black. As I grew up, I felt curious about seeing a black man at the heart of the nativity with the white-looking holy family. But who was this wise man? Was he a king? And if so, where was he from? The Bible says that the wise men came from the east, but there's good reason why I'm heading west, from the Holy Land in search of the black wise man. Even though I know from the start that tracking him down is not going to be easy. In Matthew's Gospel you have people coming from the east, wise men, they've seen a star, and they give him three presents, gold, frankincense, myrrh. It doesn't say in the story there are three of them. It just says a group, give him three presents. That turns into three people, three wise men. Then you get, just towards the end of the second century, uh, you get this African uh, sage or theologian, Tertullian, saying they were kings. At the time of Jesus' birth, an African king sat on the throne of Aksum in modern-day Ethiopia. There are two reasons why I think this is the place I might find out how the black man made it into the nativity. And the first clue is a gift. I've discovered that frankincense and myrrh come from trees and that these trees can only be found in one part of Africa. Somewhere out there. An historical detective could see that there was good logic to one of the magi being from this part of Africa. The ancient trading routes for the wise men's gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh could be followed here from Jerusalem to the roof of Africa, the mountain range that covers parts of Sudan, Eritrea and much of Ethiopia. They make this long journey. In the Bible, Matthew doesn't help my quest. He says nothing about which countries the wise men came from, gives no names and even confers no kingly status. For the first time, 500 years after the nativity, a Greek manuscript gave the wise men names. Then they got countries of origin. Finally, by the 10th century, a pious Christian writer known as Pseudo Bede went one further, giving the kings ages and specific ethnic traits. A section of the Old Testament provided a theological link to enable their makeover as kings. Everything else was retrofitted. This is all the interpretation of Old Testament texts which have nothing to do with the actual story of the birth of Jesus. But it didn't stop the church-funded painters of the Renaissance. Pseudo Bede had handed them a simple artist brief fitting to the time of the Crusades. 
It took a thousand years after the birth of Jesus for one of the three wise men to evolve into Balthazar, the king of Ethiopia. But how legitimate was the black wise man? When Jesus was born, what's now Ethiopia had a very different place in the world from today. Aksum was the seat of a grand civilization, which gave up its pagan god and built on the Jewish influences of the Old Testament, which paved the way to Christianity. Between Rome and Persia, there was no grander empire. But where was Balthazar? The king who actually turned Ethiopia Christian was King Azana in the 4th century. His coins testify to it as he swapped the pagan symbol of the disc and the crescent for the cross. But I'm already doubtful about Balthazar. How could he have been the king traveling to see Jesus and then leave it to someone else 300 years later to bring Christianity to his own kingdom? And much the same time parts of North Africa and the Roman Empire were converting too. What is more, the list of kings in this part of Africa do not include a Balthazar. I don't think King Basson brought Christianity here. I think Balthazar was imaginary, possibly inspired by yet more Old Testament prophecies that African kings would offer gifts to the Messiah. In reality, the first Christian king was here 300 years after Jesus' death, not present at his birth. But it's not the end of my journey. I've just discovered that there are pictures of the nativity scene nearby, and I'm intrigued to see what they show. Here's the picture of the Holy Family. And you can see quite clearly King Basson depicted delivering his gift of gold. What's unique about this is that Salome is also included in the picture, the midwife. But what I'm struggling with is the fact that given that Basson is from here, Ethiopia, and is an African, you would have thought they'd made some effort to distinguish his Africanness from the Easternness or Jewishness of the other figures. Having set off deep into ancient Ethiopia to find the black wise man, when I finally arrive, it seems to be the one place in the world where there's no black wise man at all. Now this says a great deal. It's actually quite shocking. You've got Mary and Jesus, the holy child, using the same kind of colour symbolism that we find in the rest of the church, where the holy family are painted in a light shade. And then in contrast, we have a picture of the devil, and the devil is black. You know, this is some serious stuff happening here. I think there never was a black wise man. Probably King Basson never was a Christian, even though he was on the throne at the time that Jesus was born. 900 years later, the church elsewhere seemed to have created itself a black African king to tell a new story to a new audience. As a result, King Balthazar, unknown in Ethiopian history, was depicted as the black wise man in the nativity scene and still appears on our Christmas cards today. The main